3,000 of you subscribe, but only about 200 are getting notifications. So click the bell and click all. I'm woefully underprepared, but um, I guess I've been doing the, the sort of off the cuff style videos recently. So consider this part of the trend. Uh, the Red Room has been banned off drive through RPG. That's Miguel and Sylvia. Um, for a product called Men that wasn't even by them, that was clearly marked as satire and adult material, uh, which means that whoever reported it had to enable adult material on their drive through browser. They had to go into the product, they had to look at the previews, um, read the text, and then buy it, and then having bought it, cognizant of all those details, uh, than to have reported it. At least, drive through says that's the that's the sequence of events that must have happened because they say only people who've bought things can report them. Uh, that doesn't seem particularly likely to me, but who am I to argue? Uh, this has upset me, and it has made me nervous to the pit of my stomach, which will become relevant at the end of this video. Now, drive through has a near monopoly on the RPG ebook space. For the pedants, who I know are out there, a monopolistic market is typically dominated by one supplier and exhibits characteristics such as high prices and excessive barriers to entry. That is dominated by one supplier, not only one supplier exists. drive through very much has a de facto monopoly over the space. I think uh, Miguel and Sylvia said that their sales from drive through were 10 times the nearest rival uh, site. And yeah, itch.io doesn't remotely compare. Amazon doesn't remotely compare. Lulu.com doesn't remotely compare. Big Geek Emporium doesn't remotely compare. Nowhere compares to drive through RPG. And is it censorship when they remove something or someone? Censorship is the suppression of words, images or ideas that are offensive and happens when some people succeed in imposing their personal political or moral values on others. Censorship can be carried out by the government as well as private pressure groups. Now, Americans seem to have a very weird idea of what constitutes free expression weirdly made worse because of their constitutions. They have this very narrow idea that only the government can censor things and it's only the government that you should be protected from. I'm talking about free expression as, as a principle here. So I think by definition what has gone on and not just in reference to the Red Room is censorship because words, images and ideas that have been deemed offensive by a vocal minority have been suppressed or removed. Now, I also think there's some cultural issues here. Portugal was a dictatorship until 1974. That's almost within my lifetime. So when people who are from Portugal call people fascists, and I want to be clear, they did not call drive through RPG fascists, they recurred a uh, uh, referred to woke scolds as fascists, but from people in a country that has so recently experienced fascism, I, I tend to take that accusation with more seriousness than I would say a Gen Z kid from California saying it, right? And as a reaction to that fascistic, dictatorial, repressive past, I think Portugal is much more liberal in the proper sense of the word than a lot of the rest of the world is now. In Portugal, prostitution is legal, pornography is legal, the age of consent is 14, which some people are probably going to find horrendous. Drugs are largely decriminalised. It is a very liberal, a very permissive society. As I say, liberal in the proper sense of the word, which sets it at odds with people who call themselves liberals these days, I suppose. I mean, I run into this cultural issue as well. In the UK, our standards of swearing are different. We use cunt as punctuation. Americans regard that as the ultimate swear word, right? Now, drive through consider themselves to be slandered by being pointed out to be 
sensors. We've covered the definition, sure, semantics, whatever. But as far as I'm concerned, and I'm sure as far as Miguel and Sylvia are concerned, yeah, this, this constitutes censorship. I have been directly censored multiple times. Venger has been threatened with removal and has had products censored. Jim Raji has to pass his products through literally a, a censorship board before they can go live on drive through. Zach Smith is banned, not for any product, but because an accusation was made against him. A product called Tournament of Rapists was banned. Um, pressure from Paizo and Evil Hat, whether through back channels or official, got one of my products banned from Drive Through RPG. That's people abusing their market position to force a third party to censor another party. Yeah, and the and the current process that you have in place at Drive Through harms publishers and leads to self censorship and that great anxiety that I'm currently feeling. It encourages malicious reporting. It harms new publications by taking them down during their peak period when they're first released. So they get taken down while you consider them. That takes however many days it's going to take, and then they come back up. Only they don't go back where they were on the front page, do they? Or in the new releases. So that encourages people to report maliciously to do direct financial damage to people, often competitors. And my personal feelings about those examples is it's really irrelevant that I think Miguel and Sylvia probably shouldn't have poked the bear quite as hard is irrelevant. That I think Venger has done some really dumbass shit isn't relevant. That Zack Smith has uh, harassed and, and annoyed me. Uh, that he is the very personification of weaponized autism, as they say on 4chan. Yeah, that it's irrelevant. He was banned based on accusations, not a conviction. That's not just, that's not right. Censorship isn't your job. You're a fucking shop. And acting as a censor is an abuse of your market position. As a near monopoly, I believe you have a duty of care and a responsibility as a facilitator. Let people's own consciences and taste be the arbitrator of what they buy. So long as it's not illegal, it's none of your fucking business. And what business is it of anyone's other than the seller and the buyer? And if you don't like something, ask for your money back. The complaints that we have now, the kind of things that people get a bug up their ass about, they're as absurd as any of the accusations about Satanism or whatever else ever were. And you don't disarm those accusations by validating them, by censoring people or taking them off your platform. And that makes them look right, not wrong. <laughs> it makes it seem like they have a point. Would Train get published in this atmosphere or Bliss Stage or Poisoned or Charnel Houses of Europe? You know, for every wonderful thing that pushes the edge of, of taste and decency, right, there's a hundred other things. For every fantastic new independent horror author that makes a success of self-publishing, you know, there's a hundred Chuck Tingle books, and people like those. Right? <laughs> Who are we to judge? Remember when we used to think that games were art and we afforded them respect? and protection from censorship and control on that basis. Good times, good times the 90s, they really were. Uh, I want to read you um, the email that I sent drive through to, to protest. Uh, I've already put it out publicly uh, on my blog, which again made me incredibly nervous, but I did nonetheless. Um, but yeah, I want to read this to you and the response is that I got. I said, Dear Sir, with great distress I note the removal of the Red Room from your online store drive through RPG. While I certainly acknowledge that there has been a degree of deliberate nipple tweaking by the Red Room in their marketing and positioning, this outcome is precisely what I was concerned would happen when you changed your policies regarding controversial content and hostile marketing. Put as succinctly as possible, I was concerned that your policy changes would result in the following. 1. Malicious reporting of products, even by people who had never bought or read the product in question. 2. 
the inability of publishers to protest poor decisions or to mobilize their fan base to counter those decisions. Three, increased censorship, whether self-censorship or otherwise. Every one of those concerns has now been borne out. We have a product maliciously reported by someone who didn't even purchase or read it, subject to the censor's eye, despite adult labeling, resulting in the loss of a publisher from a site that is a near monopoly in the space. Your policy of taking products down to be cleared impacts release profit, doing damage whether or not a product is deemed safe or not. This policy is wide open for malicious and abusive reporting. Your refusal to allow publishers to protest publicly or to face their accuser undermines confidence, increases self-censorship and removes certainty from what is already a very precarious profession. It further exacerbates the malicious reporting issue. We work in a field that has known the ire of more than one moral panic. We should know better than to indulge the moral entrepreneurs of such hysterias, even if they come from inside the industry. Your job is that of a middleman to sell products by publishers to customers. Your job is not that of a censor or moral busybody. Provided that a product is not illegal, I see no reason why you should not sell it. To censor such a product is an abuse of your monopolistic position and more broadly a betrayal of the values of the hobby and of the arts. It is especially disappointing following the industry-wide rejection of Wizards New OGL and its morality clause, which you are de facto enforcing on everyone's games unbidden. For those disturbed by such material, adult material, horror material or anything else, the best option remains not to buy something if they don't like it. It is as though we invited Pat Pulling into the industry to act as a watchdog rather than mocking, deriding and countering her ridiculous claims. Unfortunately, given your degree of monopolistic power in the industry, my protest is limited to this letter. As a disabled creator with an uncertain income, I am forced to prioritise that income over my principles, at least in this case. Still, as a producer of somewhat edgy content, I'd like to know if you're going to pull the rug out from under my feet on the arbitrary say-so of some crank with more time than sense. Still. I appeal to you to return to the free expression values we were all assured of when we originally signed up, for the sake of art and concerning your powerful position in the hobby. There is one other matter that needs addressing. Before Miguel and Sylvia set up on their own, the Red Room was published through me on the site. Given that their earlier work has not been subjected to such a witch hunt, I trust those older pro projects released via Postmortem Studios will not be affected. Would you regard the future release of compliant products by them via me as a ban evasion of so, or some such. I will be releasing this letter publicly in support of Miguel and Sylvia, but unattached to any marketing. My anti-censorship and pro-free expression stance is already a matter of public record since before I even started working in the industry, even for people I violently disagree with. So it cannot realistically be called hostile marketing. Sincerely, James Grimm, Desborough, Postmortem Studios. Uh, uh, the reply I got says as follows, uh, James, let me clarify a few things. People report titles all the time, some justified and some not, and both sorts can be malicious or not. That has never changed. In the early days before we had the reporting tool, customers would just email us directly, and back then they did not need to have purchased the title to complain about it. Our 2022 policy amendment has done nothing to change that. Yes, we get more complaints, uh, but we see no more now than one might expect based on the corresponding increases in the size of our catalogue and our user base over the years, and we have a commensurately larger team to deal with them. Press F to doubt. Um, there are some misconceptions informing your concerns. One, people who have not purchased an item cannot report it. Fair enough, but we went over that. When someone does lodge a complaint, we require actual arguments and observations with text or image citations and specific page references. If those specific complaints seem justified, we review the title ourselves before we decide whether to let it go or pull it down temporarily for a deeper look. Uh, regarding my complaint about protests, this email of yours is a protest and you have made your email a public statement to your fans as well, and that is a protest. Have there been any repercussions? 
Uh, censorship is either a misnomer or a misrepresentation. The publisher in question slandered us. We have severed our business relationship as a result. I don't agree. Um, and have there been any repercussions for my protest? Yeah, my stomach is in knots and I don't feel free to protest effectively. All right, this will probably be my last last word on the matter. James, we have some pretty simple rules that aren't hard to follow. You may not like them and you may quibble over semantics and that's your prerogative, but they are not difficult to operate within. It is also our prerogative to not work with people who say or write terrible things about us with one hand and then collect royalties from us with the other. If the publishers don't want to abide by our rules and they can't be civil to our staff, then they're welcome to publish elsewhere and we will wish them well. What we will not tolerate is people using our name, our platform and our reach to gain notoriety, all the while tarnishing our reputation even if they take money from us. And they are not going to carry any work by Miguel or Silvia, so I suspect that their products uh, within the post-mortem section of drive through will be removed soon. Okay, I know I was intercutting with my replies there. Hopefully you can tell what was and wasn't me. Um, I then replied again. This is not in the least bit reassuring to me as a creator and missed answering several points that I raised. It is hard to follow rules that are arbitrary and not evenly enforced, especially when, as happened with me, they happen at the behest of competing publishers. They are hard to follow and seemingly capricious. If you're interested in adult topics, horror and similar subjects, and even more so if marking your products clearly as adult, satirical, horror or otherwise offers no safe harbour. Thirsty Sword Lesbians, Advanced Lovers and Lesbians, for example, contains an example of forced conversion, which if presented in the reverse sexuality would certainly fall afoul of censorship and would rightly be recognised as repugnant. Yet this and other examples seem to pass. For the love of God, though, don't take this as a call to censor that product, because it's not. It's an appeal for an equitable and fair standard. Yes, this mail was a protest, and placing it publicly was a protest, but with a very real potential threat hanging over it, thanks to what I regard as an abuse of your position as a de facto monopoly. Like it or not, that threat and the subjective determination of hostile marketing that allows it is a problem. I once again implore you to turn back from your increasingly draconian policies which do amount to censorship, like it or not. Your market position burdens you with a great deal of responsibility in this regard and I refer you back to the elements of my previous mail that you ignored. Sincerely, blah blah blah. And I did get one final reply, um, let me just find that. Uh, James, our actions with regards to this publisher are not about the content. The concern relates to how they marketed that content. The hostile marketing thing, which is very subjective yet again. This is a case of slander. I disagree. We don't want to do business with people who slander us. Don't give them a reason to. I wouldn't call that draconian. They knew what they were doing. Um, I don't think so. Uh, signed, Scott Holden, he slash him, Director Marketing and Publisher Relations. Oi, Gewalt. So let me just wrap up here with um, a, a couple of things. Okay, drive through. Look, the accusations against you may or may not be true. I have my own opinions on that. You have your own opinions on that. Uh, never argue semantics with a writer, all right? But they're subjectively true uh, from the way a lot of people observe you, certainly from Miguel and Sylvia's experience. Uh, my experience in the past, I haven't had a run-in with you yet with any of my products under new management. It's so true, you're under new management. Maybe something has changed, but it doesn't look like it, especially. In fact, your rules got worse just before the takeover was publicly announced. Um, and I have other worries now, other concerns. I use Roll20 um, professionally. Are people who are banned from drive through going to be banned from Roll20? Are people who are banned from Roll20 going to be banned from drive through um, Are people who are banned going to be able to access the sites as, as a punter if they're banned as a publisher? Uh, you know, and uh, I've got bile in my throat from worry because I'm worried that you'll take what I'm saying here as, as hostile marketing. After all, I profit from YouTube videos. 
um, despite what I said in the mail, which is which is true. I mean, my stance on these things is well known. It's not marketing. It's who I am. Same as Jim Raji, who I think you treat massively unfairly. You want people to trust you, and you want them to not see you as arbitrary censors. Then you need to build that trust, and you need to act in the way that you want to be perceived. We all just got through this big fight with Wizards of the Coast, and one of the central planks of that protest was the unfair and arbitrary nature of their morality clause. <laughs> Do I need to spell it out for you with crayon on a circle of paper? <laughs> Ultimately, though, the, the biggest argument against this process that you have is, I think, that, that after this video, I am going to shut up about it, <laughs> at least until next time something like this happens. I'll, I, I will, I have, I have taken a lot of hits uh, on issues of principle, and it's cost me friends, or people I thought were friends, better way to put it perhaps, um, it's cost me a great deal of money, it's cost me opportunities, but in this instance, as, as a disabled creator with an irregular income, I can't risk pushing you too far, drive through, in case you do the same to me, right? And if you can shut me up with these threats, and I'm a bullshit bastard, right? How many other people are, are biting their tongue or censoring themselves for, for fear of what you'll do? And I, th I think that says more than the entire rest of this video does, that I feel so so constricted and afraid uh, that I that I I don't feel I can really express how I feel about this to you. Show us you're better, and um, Miguel, Sylvia, I fucking hate the paperwork. But if you want to sell your material on Post Dash Mort as well as wherever else you're going to find to put it. You're, you're welcome to. Um, I actually have the free time to set it up now. <sighs> Muted Zang. Hi, I'm Skip Breakfast, and you're watching Newsload. We're getting reports of a new card game which purports to make fun of the political and social hellscape in which we find ourselves somehow turning this into a fun pastime for groups of slightly drunken friends to try and outdo each other. But there's one important question on everyone's lips, just how exactly do you play? Is lonely, we'll make things hard for you. Just